All right, everyone are here? All right, so um, one of the more difficult things tonight will be is to finish the challenge. So everyone... I'm going to wait for Shabbos session. Yeah, get comfortable. Get comfortable. Um, yeah, so there is... I'm going to just you know, see how I wrote my notes. This week I wrote it on the computer. All right. So there's this week, um, this Hanukkah, does everyone know? Um, something unique about this year, which it comes out pretty often in other years as well. But this year, Shabbos Hanukkah, which is this coming Shabbos, and Rosh Chodesh are land on the same day. So we have the occasion that when everyone will come to Shul and they'll take out three Sefer Torah. Don't be confused why are they taking out three Sefer Torah if the Shul has three Sefer Torah, of course. Don't get confused and uh, you know, go to the Gaba and to the Rav and say there's a mistake going on because there's a reason. The reason is we have three separate lanings. One laning is for Shabbos, the regular Sidra. The second one is for Rosh Chodesh. And the last one is what we're leaning now every day in Shachris, which is the part of the Nesim. Uh, we read it on Shabbos as well. And that's the three um, leanings we have. Now, where it gets complicated is by the Haftarah. We always know that there's a Haftarah that's related for Shabbos. And if it's Shabbos for Shkodesh, there's some Haftarah that over, overrides. It overrides the regular Haftarah. And then, um, Shabbos for Shkodesh, there's a, there's a conflict. On the one hand, we have Rosh Chodesh, which is unique haftar, which is unique haftara when Shabbos comes out on Rosh Chodesh, and on the other hand, we have um, on the other hand we have Hanukkah, which Shabbos Hanukkah has its own haftara. So usually, if it's just Shabbos and and Hanukkah, so Hanukkah overrides. But what happens now when Rosh Chodesh overrides Shabbos and Hanukkah overrides Shabbos? When they clash, the Haftarah of Rosh Chodesh and the Haftarah of Hanukkah, who overrides who? It's clear, the question clear is a little... I would say Shabbos overrides Hanukkah because Shabbos overrides everything except for Yom Kippur, which is Shabbos Hanukkah. Not, that's not true. Hanukkah's not in the, in the Torah, maybe, that's one? There you go. Shabbos, Shabbos Rosh Chodesh Hanukkah. Which one overrides? Shabbos, Shabbos overrides Hanukkah, 100%. The Shabbos, Shabbos overrides everything Rosh Chodesh, except for Rosh Chodesh, again, 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 one second. I guess that wasn't so clear. I guess that wasn't so clear. When there's the Haftar... The Haftar, Shab, the Haftarah of Shabbos, right. a regular Shabbos, you know, Parshas uh, Vayesh. It should override anything. So it should override, but it doesn't. If you have a Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, there's a different, uh, there's a, the Haftarah of Shabbos Rosh Chodesh, you need to flip to the back, and if you're in a fancy shul, they have numbers up front. I think they're disrespecting they, All right, so that is, that is, um... What we do in Rosh Chodesh lands on Shabbos. Yeah, Chodesh. Uh, and when we even have Machar Chodesh, that's when it's an Arab Rosh Chodesh. And then when we have Hanukkah lands on Shabbos, which every year lands on Shabbos because it's eight days. But when, so the, there's a Haftarah for Hanukkah that overrides the regular Haftarah that we read for the Sidra of Shabbos, of that Parsha. What happens when Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh clash? There's the Haftarah of Shabbos. And the Haftarah, uh, the Haftarah of Rosh Chodesh, and the Haftarah of Hanukkah. So which one overrides, which one do we do? We only read one Haftarah. We don't say, okay, you know, we take out three Sefer Torah, let's take out two Nevim and read twice. But so why we don't we? Oh, good question. It's not an issue. You're allowed to read as much Torah. Very, very right? good question. It's not the topic of this week, but maybe if you put in next a request, week. we could do it next week. Why? Yeah. How did they pick the Haftarahs? And why do we do every time only one? You know, every Shabbos that there's a unique thing. Shabbos and Shabbos Rosh Chodesh do two. This week you should do three. Right, good question. All right. So. Hanukkah, Hanukkah, no? I'm just guessing. My guess is Hanukkah. Yeah. Ah, your guess is, is, is worth 50, 50%. Uh, you know, 50% you're right, 50% you're wrong. You know, how much money would you put for that? All right. So, the, there's an interesting Gemara. There's the Sugi of Hanukkah, it's called, which is a Gemara in Mosech Shabbos that discusses uh, Hilchos. Hanukkah, um, all the halachos, when the light, how many the light, how the light, etc. All the all the different opinions and all the different halachos are discussed in a couple of dafim uh, over here. And that's you know chafes, chaf gimel, more chaf gimel, chaf So there's a very interesting gemara over there. 
What happens to someone that doesn't have any money? He, he has some money, not a, he has enough money to buy one candle. So what, can, what should he use this candle for? For Shabbos, and he'll light Shabbos candles, or for Hanukkah? Hanukkah. 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 Which one should he light? Hanukkah. Hanukkah is not the Raisa. Hanukkah is not the Shabbos is. Wait, actually, yeah, Shabbos. Candles, Shabbos. Of, Shabbos. candles right. of Shabbos is probably you also not the Raisa. Shabbos is the Shabbos. You're right. Lighting candles on Shabbos is not, not the Raisa. Yeah. But Shabbos itself is the Raisa. Okay. Hanukkah is not the so Raisa the Gemara, at all. The Gemara says the following. Amar Rava. Rava comes and says this opinion. Pshita, li, simple dim, the ner beisa, which means the candle of, of Shabbos, Vener Hanukkah, if the guy only has one choice, he has one shot. Pshitali, that what that he should do, Ner Beso Adif. That what that he should do is the Shabbos candle. Bam! It sounds like he was right, but the reason is totally different. Not because of what he said. No. Yeah. Good guess. The Gemara says, the Gemara says the following. Ner beso adif mishum shalom beso. The Shabbos candles, the reason we light Shabbos candles, one of the reasons we light Shabbos candles, is because when people eat in the dark, it's not so peaceful. You know the famous story with the lights went out and everyone put their fork in the, you know, right? So there's a, rest, a fancy restaurant and everyone are, are well, well prepped and well, well dressed and well behaved. And there was a very good, there was one extra steak. Everyone got a fancy steak, and there was one extra steak on the main dish in the middle, and everyone are so proper, they can't, you know, no one's going to take another steak, so there, the steak was there, and everyone are just eyeing it. And then the lights went out, you know, like here, every now and then the lights go out. The steak disappeared. And, no, there was a shout, a shout. They turn on the lights, fork and there was, hand. everyone's fork was there, and there was one guy that grabbed with his hand, that's how they all end, right? Never so that's, the, here, it's very, so it's very important, it's very, very important to light Shabbos candles, right? You don't want this ha- to happen on the, by the Shabbos table, right? It should be light. That's why, uh, just Agav, um, there's a, um, various people that don't make a bracha, um, on Shabbos candles when the lights are on, because the whole reason of Shabbos, Candles was back in the day. They didn't have electricity. So the candles were like a whole purpose of this is our candle. But now we have these beautiful lights. We're not enjoying this light. So what that they do is they turn off the lights, and then that's why they say the minug is the women cover their eyes while they you know they do like this. You think it's like for the huji buji of their davening? No, the reason is because they move their thing, they move their hands from their eyes. Now they're enjoying the light. So this thing of, of shalom ba'is, of peace in the home, overrides everything. Overrides, if you have only one, a money for one candle, what you should buy is the candle for Shabbos. Because of shalom ba'is. Then Rava comes and says, boy Rava, he has a question. What if a guy has, he has money, okay, he already has money for his one Shabbos candle, right? But now he has another uh, amount of money that's exactly enough either for grape juice for Kiddush or for a Hanukkah candle. Hanukkah candles. So Pre- which one days. over, very good, which one yes or no? over, no, which <laughs> one over, I would have said yes, you know why? Because if you were right, so for sure. The Shabbos is 100%, right. man, the, the whole that Hanukkah was thing is just, it happened, Shabbos happened way before right. Hanukkah ever happened. So the Gemara says the other way. The Gemara says that that so Rav had this question: Which one overrides? Always Which Shabbos, one overrides? Shabbos always trumps everything, man. So, so Rav, every young tip or Shabbos trumps. So now, what's the question? What's the tooth study? Why, why in the world should Hanukkah be better, and why in the world should Kiddush be better, what right? Why, why? But well, both ends. It's a real question. Why should Hanukkah be better, and why should Kiddush be better? Says Rav, the tzad, the side that we're taking that Kiddush should be better is because there's a halacha, which we learn from Psukim, Tadir ve'eno tadir, tadir kodem. Something which is consist, overrides unconsist things. So since Shabbos is more consist, it's every week we have a Shabbos, it overrides, it would override the, if you, if you can only do one of the two, you should pick the Tadir. That's the reason we should do Kiddush. What's the reason we should do Hanukkah? 
או דילמה, maybe, נר חנוכה עדיף, משום פרסומה ניסה. Yeah. Where's the hand? Where's the stick? Uh, where's the Nisa now, dude? Right? So, Adilma, again, the other tzad is, why? Why should Hanukkah be any better? Hanukkah is better because Pirsuma Nisa. On Hanukkah, there's this thing that you don't have in other, in other things um, when you're comparing it to Hanukkah, which is Pirsuma Nisa. You go outside, you see a, a menorah, someone let a Hanukkah, It's Mefar saying the nace, it's advertising the nace that happened. And that's such a great thing that that might even override the halacha of Tadir V'She'enu Tadir, the halacha that you should make Kiddush. All right, so this is Rav's question. So Rav answers, Rav comes and says the following. Hodar, Hodar, Bosar um, De'ibaya, Hodar Pashta. After he asked this question, he answered. What was his answer? Ner Hanukkah Adif. Lighting the Hanukkah candles is better. Why? Mishum Pirsuma Nisa. Because it is Mefar Seim the Nais. Pirsuma Nisa is even greater than that. Even. Now, just before we move on from this and take it to the next step, I just want to bring in a nice story that the Chafetz Chaim, he had a Rebbe. The Rebbe, is, uh, his name was Reb Nachumka from Haradana or something like that. And he, there's many, many stories about this Reb Nachumka from Haradana, many spooky stories. Uh, the Chafetz Chaim said on him a few stories that he saw once a fire surrounding him. And, and this is the Chafetz Chaim saying, which every word, you know, it's still it's the Chafetz Chaim. Every word he said was, he counted every word. So he's, there's many, many stories. He was a holy, holy person. And remember, these are two, these are Litvisha people. They're Litvaks, right? So they, they do the halacha and the time. So the Chafetz Chaim is at his Rebbe for Hanukkah. And the time, Shkia passes, and his Rebbe is not even showing any, you know, sign that he's getting ready to light the Hanukkah candles. He, you know, maybe he's keeping the second time, the Rabbeinu Tamzman, you know. No, nope, sitting, not, 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 not even showing that he's going to light the Hanukkah candles. So the Chafetz Chaim is like, you know, this is what for people, time is time. So what is, what is, what is going on? So the Chafetz Chaim asked him, I don't know if he asked him or he just told him, What is going on? It's Hanukkah, and there's the halacha, it says that you need a light right away. So what, what is going on? So Reb Nachumka told him, if someone has money for one thing, for either Hanukkah or Shabbos candles, we say the Hanukkah, the Shabbos candles override because of Shalom Bais. Shalom Bais is more important. Well, why not? Because it's like, of God, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's a good question. This is, where, this is what the Gemara says. This is what the Gemara says. So why, why do... Why, so why does it override? Because of Shalom Bas. Rabbi Nachumka said his wife was coming back late that night. Mm. And she, he's waiting for her to light it. Because if you have only one candle, it overrides that. So for sure also now, if it's a question, if the wafer and Mekayim the Hanukkah with Shalom Bas, that's what he'll do. So this is Rabbi Nachumka. Oh. So this is Rabbi Nachumka. Believe it or not, Isn't the question about actual breaking Shabbat? Is yeah, that the question? Yeah. No, 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 no. Yes. It's all about lighting before Shabbos. No one's talking about lighting on Shabbos. Oh, no. yeah. We're lighting before Shabbos. The question is, even this, the even this is, year, when we light the Hanukkah no, candles, no. we light them before Shkia. No, 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 no. So you said about Chaim. Yeah. Chaim is like the Rebbe. Yeah. 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 Or for, uh, for Hanukkah uh, candles. You just got an ounce? Hanukkah candles override. You said it was a Pursuminisa. Right. So why don't you use Pursuminisa? But, but there we didn't even need Pursuminisa. Oh, we didn't even get the Pursuminisa. No, when, when, when we bring the two, the, the two. Hanukkah. Very good question. The Gemara didn't bring it. Rava said, Rava said already in a simple way. Rava said in a simple way that the, 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 uh, he doesn't even have a question that Sean Bias even overrides everything. Overrides even Pursuminisa. He didn't. Rava didn't even present it over there as a question. He said, What did Abaya say, though? There's no Abaya in this. There's no Abaya in this. If and Abaya, I go with Abaya. Straight up. You always seem to be have the more logical way. All right. right? So, this, this halacha, Pursuminisa, is something which is part of the mitzvah in Hanukkah. It's not just that there's candles of Hanukkah, and there's another Indian which is Pursuminisa. And I'll bring a few sources for this thing. First one is, when do we light the candles? What is the 
proper time to light the candles. Of what, Hanukkah? Of Hanukkah. It has to be a uh, plug of Minka. You can start a plug of Minka. Proper, the best time. Prime. 30 minutes, 30 minutes. Pl- when Prime the people time. are walking uh, to the store. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You're only at this rate, you'll be sitting here one day. <laughs> so, there is a, 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 a Gemara, basically, in the tour, but the tour is lush and is extremely interesting. So the tour is a good guy. Is you have to light, <laughs> um, you have, the time for Adlaka <laughs> is from Shkia Achetichla Haregel Mahashuk, which means till when people, till people will, people will stop walking around, till then is the time that you have to light the candles. Why? Because then. That time is prime time when people see your menorah. They see your Hanukkiah in the window or by the door, wherever you light it. And since the Indian of Hanukkah is Pirsumanisa, the the Torah writes, Zeu Iker Mitzvasa. That's the Iker of the Mitzvah. The Iker of the Mitzvah is the Pirsumanisa. And because of that, that's the time that you need to do it. And there's opinions that if you miss this time, you shouldn't be lighting anymore. Because you know, there's no more Pirsum. 30, 30 minutes after the oh, around there. 30 or 40 or 50, but whatever it is. But today, what you, yeah, everyone very is good. So today, so, but, but in the olden so days, one minute, in the, one minute, in the olden right. days, in the olden days, when people did not walk around late, there was opinions... That and the tour brings it down. There's opinions that you should not be lighting your candles anymore. You missed it because because the whole mitzvah is to advertise, to advertise the nace. There's no one walking around. You know, they won't see it. Now we don't pass it like that. The tour doesn't pass it like that. We continue lighting. But this is just to bring out that there is such an opinion. The reason we don't do it. One of the reasons is because it's advertisement for me that's lighting it. And now bishas hasakana which is already brought down in the Gemara, not all the years, if you go to Eretz Yisrael, or even in, in places in America, where people feel more safe and secure, there, many people light their Hanukkiah, their menorah, they light it by their front door, outside the proper way, by the doorway where people are coming in, coming out, and everyone from you the outside can see it. You have to have it by the window, right? You do not have to have it by the window. The best prime place is by the doorway. If you can't do it by the doorway, then do it by the window. The reason they moved it even did a table in the living room is because either Gaim will come, the, the, non, the non-Jews, they could do pogroms, and they, there were stories about this already from, you know, a thousand years ago. So they say, okay, so do it at home, and it will be an advertisement for Bnei Beisa. And this is brought down already in the Gemara, Bishasa Sakana, Manicha Al Shulchano Vidayo. It's good enough. But the prime way, the Iker Mitzvah, is advertisement. And because of this, there's another very interesting halacha. And the interesting halacha is, what, what if I live on the 10th floor? It's a whole question. Can you even light the menorah? Because the Gemara says, more than 20 amos, people are not walking around like this, looking up. There's a certain, a dis, there's a certain height that the eye sees. More than that, the eye doesn't see. So 20 amos was a, 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 a height. The Gemara uh, said that more than that, the eye, you know, people are, will need to actually, sh- you know, start looking up like that. It's not the normal way how people see. Therefore, if you light over 20 amos, you're not even yotze. According to some opinions, for sure, you need to consult with your rav what to do. But that's him, you need to do a lower than that. Because part of the mitzvah, or more, not only part, but something essential about this whole mitzvah of Hanukkah, is to advertise it and to let everybody know about it. So there's a few halachos about this persumanisa. Now, just we'll zip it up, this topic, with our previous question with our at previous one question. Point, at one point during the Gemara, did anybody have an apartment that was 20 amas up? That's a four story How? building. Four it never happened. So, Bizman Hazeb, where it's common, and we have literally 100 story building, don't you think if the Rabbana were alive then, that would be Yose the Mitzvah? Just like the way the Glen put out their Christmas lights and we could all see them from over 100 feet up, 200 feet up? Don't you think if we lit our big menorah like the Lubavitchers do in Central Park, that are 80 feet up, which are way higher than 40 amas, are they not Yosa the Mitzvah? So, very good question. There's a it's one really, second. It really wasn't a question. It was more of a statement. Okay. Statement. So I have, I have, I have a statement. Is, 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 I have a statement. They're not lighting the menorahs for the Mitzvah. I understand that. The they're lighting the menorahs just 
That's the real, hello, that's the real person who needs up. The right. way when the little barbers go around to the neighborhood where everybody are anti-Semites and they light up their big 80 foot, 90 it's foot menorah. That, that is the biggest pursuing that right. you could ever do. All right. Where there were yeah, eight, there were eight people that were beat up in in Crown Heights this week okay, by black people, right? And what they do, you go out, you light an 80 foot menorah. They don't don't tell me that nobody right. looks up 80 feet. Excellent. Well, they don't have 80 feet. It's a statement, it's, it's fine, it's a statement. However, the eye doesn't see in a natural way to that height. People are not looking for little candles, which that is the mitzvah of Hanukkah. You can't even make something too big. And and because of this halacha of Pirsuma Nisim. Okay. So now the question we just said zip up the how we open. The Rishonim write, the Balayatosfos, on the Suya say, that because this halacha that Rav says with Pirsuma Nisa overrides Kiddush, the same thing on Shabbos Hanukkah that lands on Rosh Chodesh, the Haftarah of Shabbos Hanukkah will override the Haftarah of Rosh Chodesh, even though the Haftarah of Rosh Chodesh is more tadir, even though, and maybe we should be lighting that, but because the Haftarah of Hanukkah mentions Candles, it mentions a menorah, uh, some nevuah that there's a menorah mentions. It reminds people about Hanukkah, that's more of Pirsumanisa, and it overrides the Haftarah, which we'll usually do for Shabbos or Shkodesh. Now, the what question is that, that we said that for, for sure, sure. sure it overrides. That it, it overrides. It overrides Shabbos in general. Yes. What does it mean override? Overrides the Haftarah that we le- read for the Sidra well, of I mean, Shabbos. Well, yes. Well, yeah, well, that's how we well, started the well, 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 right. with you, with you So now. Well. The, the question is, a general question, what are we exactly advertising? What nace are we advertising? What nace are we advertising? This is a, you know, it's very important. We need to advertise. We need to advertise. Pirsuma Nisa. You know, we're advertising the miracle. What miracle are we advertising? So there's something extremely interesting. That there's two separate things that are brought down. And... If we look at it, well, it's, it's almost a question. It's almost a question, what, what is going on? There's two separate things. Number one, number one is, the Gemara says that Gavra Yad Chashmonai, when the Chashmonai, you know, they had a battle with the, with the Yevonim, with the Greeks, they, they won them, and then they were they came to light the menorah, and they only found one little pach shaman, and that pach shaman, there was enough oil in it for one day, and it lived for eight days. And because of that, kavum l'shana acheres, they right away were kovayed as yamim l'halel l'hodos. So that's, that's number one, and that's where our Hanukkah came from. That's what the Gemara says. But if we think about it, when we say the al-hanisim and davin, what? What? If you remember to say the al nisim and davani, that's what you meant. No, no. no. Oh, <laughs> if you say, I also, if I you say when, if you say, <laughs> if you say the al nisim and davani. I so al nisim, al purgam. We're thanking for the for all the things, and we're bimei matisia obenecha. We speak about the battle and how the chalashim beat the gibor and beat chalashim and tmei beat tor. We're going through the battle and how they won and how they came to Beis Hamikdash and they lit candles. We're not even mentioning this miracle of that it lived for eight days. When we're talking about the thank, the thank you here, we're just mentioning the whole miracles in a general way how we had a battle and we won. So there's many, many, many answers about this. I want to bring out one that I think is straightforward and simple. There was battles... The miracles through the battles were miracles. It was kind of, you know, if we could take a muscle from our day and age, the Six Day War. You know, in six days... Where the Israelis took care of everybody. In six days, the, the, the Bali Tshuva movement started, started after the Six Day War. So many people that were in the Six Day War, they were like, this thing makes no sense. Soldiers that were fighting, that were in the battle. They were like, what, what happened now? Made no sense. The sun was exactly in their eyes of the tanks of, of the Syrian tanks. And the, the guys from Iraq, exactly this. And everything was exactly, and, so, and thing, battle after battle, they won. So many Balai Chuba have, that's when the Balai Chuba movement started. 
Back then, in 67, after that. Till then, there was no Baal Tshuva movement. So, the, the, it's kind of, if we could take a marshal, the Six Day War could bring us an idea, could bring us an idea of what happened then. But on the other hand, there was a lot of other people that also didn't, they did not become Bali Tshuva. They did not become, they did not become Bali Tshuva after the Six Day War. They said, no, what do you mean? We have a strong army, we're well trained, and that's why we won. So in a way, also at the time of the Hashmonoim, there were all these battles. There was all these battles, and they were winning battle after battle, Shalom Kedar HaTeva, miracles after miracles. But it wasn't clear out there. It wasn't clear that Hashem is involved. People didn't see it in a clear way. But then there was something that came, and you could not explain it. All the other things you could maybe explain, oh, he worked out better in the gym, so he had better muscles, so that's why he could shoot with the bow and arrow better, and that's why he could do so many, you know, each, you could have an explanation, but the eight days with oil for one day, that proved that Hashem is here no matter what. He was here out through the whole thing, throughout the whole battle. And that's why after the candles, that's when they could covet, they covet on Al Am Yisrael as Yemei Halal V'hodah, through the candles, they saw that 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 hashgacha from Hashem. Now, I want to end up with there's a a rokeach. Rokeach was one of the rishonim. I think he was a little after Rashi. He was one of the rishonim, and he wrote a lot of kabbalistic things. And usually, I don't understand them, um, as you know, I'm not such a great mekubel. Usually, I don't understand what he's saying, and also now I'm not coming to say that I understand. But he says like this: There's 36 candles. On Hanukkah. What's the 36 candles? It's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Comes out 36. The number. Yeah? Right? Am I wrong? Well, he's what I'm doing. He, he's taking the numbers. He's timing it right. by 1 by 1 by 1. 1, the first day, plus the one second day. Plus, so it's exactly. 1 plus 2. Plus that's 2 how candles. You, that's how you get to And then plus going. 3 candles. You get the number 36. And the Rokeh, which is one of the Rishonim, which means way, you know... 800 years ago, 900 years ago, somewhere over there, maybe 700. He said, he said, like this, the Lamed Vav, the number, the 36, is connected the 36 hours that in Briyas Olam, Hashem, it says, Hashem made the light, and then after that it says, Vayar Elohim Sa'or Kitov, he saw the light that was good, Vayavdel. So Rashi over there says, what does it mean by Avdel? If it's good, what is this by Avdel? So he says, so Rashi says in Chumash, Hashem saw that this light is not good for, for regular people. He gnuzzled the tzaddikim la'asid lavo. He put it away that the tzaddikim la'asid lavo would have it. However, says the Rokeh, there was 36 hours that that light was here, and these 36 candles are connected those 36 hours. Now, I'm not coming to say I understand what he's saying. Go oh, what, a candle per hour? And what does it mean that the menorah is that light of Oregonus and the candles of, of 1 plus 2, which is a mahadrim and a mahadrim? I'm not coming to explain. I, I, I don't really understand. But one thing is, I think even we simple people, I mean, unless there's some great makuba that could explain it in the crowd, but even we simple people, I think, could understand that Hanukkah was a time, or Haganus, without understanding what exactly or Haganus means, but or Haganus means there was no Choshech. We saw clear. We saw clear. We had the Bria in a clear way. We had the way the world is run in a clear way. Hashem saw it's not good for the world. He put it away and came Choshech. Came darkness. We don't understand everything. We have questions. We don't see the way of the Bria. Hanukkah was a time. We had a glimpse from Hashem of clarity. Hashem is with us. Hashem is with us in the dark. Hashem is with us. We got some sort of clarity of that or Haganus, of that clarity of how the world is ran. He wrote some, just end up like every week we try to end up what we could take from this for our lives. Is when we light the Hanukkah candles, we should remember this Pursuma Nisa. And it's essential. What are we mefarsim? We're mefarsim the nisim and flows that happen. How miracles and miracles happen. We're molded to Hashem for them. But what it, what, it, what it means for us is Hashem is with us. 
we are bringing that back, that reminder for us, Hashem is with us, Afalpi, no matter what happens. So everyone should have a good Shabbos and a good Shabbos uh, uh, for Chodesh and good Chodesh, I mean, and a good, good Hanukkah. And when they read the Aftar, now you know what, what's going on. It's just that's also another a bonus, a bonus from the Shia. Can I get the 36 Tzadikim also? Hidden for the Tzadikim. Can I get the 